welcome everybody to Tammy Tuesday, the podcast of life, love, and purpose. Very happy you're here today. I'm extra excited because we have a continuation of our favorite Karen Shell, my dear soul sister here, to continue her story of her journey. And it has been almost to the day nine months since the last time we sat together. There are no accidents on timing. And so I cannot wait for her to share her amazing journey at this point with you. There's been a lot that's happened since the last time we spoke. We didn't even get into everything that happened before we spoke last time. Um, so we're going to continue that conversation and we hope you enjoy it. Karen, thank you for being here again. I'm so happy you're here. It is my pleasure. I cannot believe it has been nine months. I can't either. Yeah. Well, you know what that tells me? I've been doing this a long time. Right? <laughs> That's true. I didn't realize I've been doing, I mean, it just goes so fast. I mean, you guys, seriously, my loyal listeners, thank you so much, first of all. But really, I'm like, I can't believe how fast the time has gone. I mean, we're coming up on a year. Yeah, yeah. Of doing this already. What it tells me is that, wow, this has been a long journey. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm sure it's been eye-opening for you when you hear that. It has. I mean, it's every day. I mean, when you talk about the, the, the timing, you know, is intentional remember we had a couple of other appointments for this and then I would have a trip come up or, or work or something. And so we had to keep postponing and I'm, I'm, I ended up being really glad that I did because I've, I've learned so much even in just in the last few weeks. I know. Cause it's just endless. I know. I mean, seriously every day. I mean, I'm still learning, but right. Well that, that yeah. journey never ends. That's right, the thing yes. that's interesting is you, you're never going to get to the end of your story cause it's just going to continue on, but it's yeah. fun to share. That's what's cool about this is you're literally my only guest that I'm having two segments, at least at this point. Um, but neither means I'm long winded. No, it actually, what <laughs> I think, what about. I think it means a lot of things. One of the things I think that it means is that, um, your message is very important. And I also think that, um, there's no accidents on the abrupt stop that we had on the other one just due to time constraints. And it was like, well, we're not ready to tell the rest of the story. Yeah. So there's more it to really tell. It really was meant to be. Oh yes. yeah. There's no question. And I really do feel that my story is important. Um, and that's why I'm willing to be so vulnerable because, um, there are, I really believe it can help a lot of people mm. when they, when they hear the journey that I've been through. Without question. That's because whether whether or not you've lived through trauma or not, everyone at some point faces some extreme challenges in their life and massive setbacks. And so it's something that I think, you know, just about everybody can really gain something from. Yeah. So if I, you know, if, if my journey and the pain that I've been through can help someone um, get through their journey, find find their happy place. Find peace. Find peace. Then, you know, then that's that's why I'm here. Yeah, I know. Well, you've done yeah. so much of that already in your life. And we talked about that last time, which was you starting purposeful nonprofit work to give back and help other people, you know, find their joy and their their love and some peace and compassion. And you did so much of that. And that will continue without question, because truthfully, that's just who you are. And yeah. it's starting with you. And that's the best part. Yeah. That's where I feel like this going back into this, the second chapter that we're talking about now, right. well, it's probably chapter 20 for you, but I mean, as far as this podcast goes, this is right. chapter two now. So as we talk about it, the shift that I've seen as your friend has been more pouring into Karen. You're pouring into yourself. And you talked about being in your bubble last time mm -hmm. and in your bubble, you were, we kind of can get stuck in our bubble. And when we move out of our bubble, we start to see the bigger picture of what's really at work here. And you've done so much work about that, but it's ironic because we're talking about being in your bubble and really you are going inside, but there's two perspectives to that because if you're going inside, you're really seeing what's really going on outside of the bubble. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of ironic. Yeah, it is kind of ironic. Right? Yeah. So let's start by, let's, let's, let's go for it. So okay. the last thing I remember us talking about last time was you sharing, you had, uh, experimented with psychedelics. You had gone on a, a medicine healing journey and you had brand new awarenesses that you didn't realize the depths of what they were. Yep. So you started with that. So since then, what happened? Where did it go next? Well, at the time that we, of podcast one, um, I, I, can see now that I had not even begun to process what surfaced. Right. Um, so what, what surfaced was that my abuse was so much worse 
than I realized, and, and I realized what I had been carrying around. So that was just the tip of the iceberg. There's, there's been so many countless layers to come after that. So soon, so if it was mid, it was about a month after we last spoke, at least here, yeah, and um, that I had another psychedelic journey. Mm -hmm. And that one, it's like, okay, well, now that it's surfaced, all right, what, what do I need to know? Um, and so that one was really to prepare me to, to dive in, to process, as they say, um, as a therapist, so, you know, the, the psychedelics I've done has been in a, you know, in a, a very controlled environment. It's been a, assisted therapy. Right. And so the therapist that I was working with um, during that journey, she said, you know, Karen, you need to embrace the darkness. I didn't even have any idea what that meant at the time. Right. Um, she said, you need to feel the emotion of it all over again. And, um, and so that, so that really started this, this next part of the, the journey. When and she said that to you, how did that hit? Were you like, Oh, I don't want to, or I honestly, if, if I had embrace? known, um, I mean, it, it, I just didn't really even know. I, I couldn't like, comprehend okay. what that meant. Right. Um, you know, I'm like, you know, I face hard things. No problem. That's true. But, um, yeah, I, I really didn't know until I, until afterwards. And so what, one thing I would say about psychedelic assisted therapy is that it's critical that it, it that doesn't solve your problems. Mm -mm. It might bring something to the surface, shed light on something that your deep inner self wants you to know, but that's where the work begins. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So tip, if like anyone said, tip of the iceberg. Oh yeah. If anyone were considering <laughs> that, I would say do not do it unless you are willing to do the massive amount of work that comes afterwards, and before. So even before you do the journey, you have all of this um, uh, homework. Essentially, you have. I had multiple calls with the therapist and and wrote. And, she, and this she, was a one-on-one -on -one session, this right? One, the, the first, first one, one was, was group. group. This was one-on-one. This was one-on-one. On one. On one. Okay. And um, so she knew me really well before we started the session and what I wanted to gain from it and what I was going through at the time. And so, you know, she, it was different in the sense that in, in, the, in the group, it's very, you're silent. You can share as a group before um, you take the medicine and you can share again afterwards. But during the journey itself, there's no talking because you don't want to interrupt anyone else's journey. Right. But the one-on-one, -on -one, we talked the whole time. Mm, totally different experience. Totally different experience. Yeah. And she was just the perfect person. And, um, and so, you know, she, it was a combination. She, she, would, she would offer insights sometimes. She would ask me questions, ask for memories uh, at other times. Um, some of the insights that she shared was, you know, um, that uh, what I had gone through with the nonprofit was, um, was abusive. And that, you know, when I was a child, I could not walk away. Mm. She said, but now you get to walk away. You walk away, you, you block it. And, um, and that, you know, one of your jobs in life, Karen, is to protect yourself. And that you never learned how. And so, so it really sort of got me empowered to, to, to dive into the next stage. So after that session, um, I began to find out what she meant by embrace the darkness. Mm. And I mean, that night after, for, for six days after, I mean, so much was coming up. I was just journaling, <laughs> literally for six days, for three nights, so for three nights and three days, I barely slept. Mm, so much was just so coming much up. coming up, and you were just writing down what was coming up. Yeah, and so it was like <laughs> I got to make sure I don't whack this because I use my hands. It was like that first night, pieces like sh shifting together, <laughs> and wow. one of the things I realized, well, and and actually the processing the pain began that night. I mean, I was in a hotel room. And uh, the people next to me probably thought <laughs> something was happening because all, all these tears started coming out. I mean, like wailing tears. Mm. And so that's when I really finally started to process it. And what I, um, one of the things I realized right away was that 
I mean, I had I knew that what I went through with the nonprofit really triggered me because I felt so deeply betrayed and it was so it felt so wrong. Um, but I I started realizing really just how close I mean, it literally mirrored what I went through as a kid. Explain that more. Um, so the uh as a kid, you know, there was um, the abuser, and then there was an enabler, someone in a position of power to stop it and not doing anything. Mm. And same thing with the nonprofit. Someone in, um, there was essentially a, a, a abusers, which I'm gonna come back to later. I've, I've since changed that, that term. Um, and then, then a, other people in a position of power to do something that and was happening that was so aware. wrong, and, and that we're aware. aware, and did nothing. Okay. So in that sense, in, in that sense, it, it directly mirrored my childhood, but in so many other ways. Uh, for example, working really hard for something, and mm -hmm. having it taken away, and that happened many times. That, that's part of you know when you're going through complex trauma, which means you know it's sustained over a long period of time, and mine was complex and on multiple levels, um, and that's part of what goes along with it is just all the manipulation. It's to take take your power away, right? And so um, working hard for something and having it taken away was one of those many things. So I could go on and on and on about the ways that it mirrored it. Right. But um, I finally started to begin to realize, um, you know, what what that embracing the pain meant, and and to feel the emotion, and it's a scary scary thing. Even before I started, um, when I had first met her and I had told her what happened in the previous year and how, you know, what had surfaced, she said, Karen, you're so brave. Most people can't face this. And so it's not easy. Mm -mm. You, you knew that going in though. I knew it going in. And that's why you chose to do it. You yeah. chose to do I, it. Absolutely. You didn't know what it was going to look like. I didn't you know what it was going to look like. Participate. But yeah, I certainly could have stopped once I, I'm like, oh man, there's something, uh, there's something really big in there. But I'm, yeah, the opposite. All right, all right, let's let's dig in, let's explore this. I that's just, fortunately, that's my nature. Well, so when you, when you, these things were bubbling up, like you talked about, your abuse was way worse than you even remembered. Is that really because people talk about abused people talk mm -hmm. about when they endure the abuse. They like it's funny. What comes to mind right now is that movie that just came out about um, has uh, Blake Lively in it. It's about a, a an abused woman oh, yes. in a relationship, and her she comes. It from, stops with us, I think. It stops with yes, stops with us. Yeah. And the reason I bring that up is because I saw that we saw it together. Yep. The duh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a moment, I guess. Um, so, but when we, when we saw that, it's that. It's like that gave me a whole. That's right. We talked about this you and I privately. Um, but it showed me who is a person that never did come from an abusive situation, thankfully, mm. um, that people that do can tend to uh, switch the script and see it differently or bury it. I mean, there's lots of things that people yeah. do. And th those are the blocks that get stuck. And when you do something like heavy to do therapy or psychedelics or insert therapy here, um, it bubbles those things up. So then all of a sudden you have to look at them and you're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Some people don't even know they were abused. Yeah. And they go there and they're like, oh my gosh, I was abused and I didn't even know it because it was that buried. Is that what was, I, you obviously were very aware of your abuse, but was it mm -hmm. just how severe it was? Was it, what was it that was bubbling up that was a new awareness that you really were like, oh my gosh, that is a really dark, ugly thing that I really didn't realize how bad it was. It's just, I was so young when it started. Mm. So some of the memories you didn't really have. Yeah, I think um, it, in order to survive, my poor tiny little brain, I had to compartmentalize it and shove it down. Yeah. Um, it's just as a means of survival. Right. Um, because it was, yeah, it was so bad and, and I was so young. Um, yeah. And, and help never came, and, and uh, so the, the, the feeling of helpless, helplessness just got worse and worse, and obviously it was very prolonged. Well, and fear, so, you talked about that last time, about how fear, how it attacked your, your central nervous system, because that fear was so deeply buried that it was truly 
not ever surfaced. It was festering and therefore it was coming out. Well, the, the when I come back to the back, um, and it's definitely, I, I believe, related to my back specifically, the central nervous system in my mind was maybe some fear, but more related to the degree to which I was pushing myself okay. for so long. Literally. But don't you think that they're connected? That well, you might yes, it was yourself? out of, yes. it's out of, out of fear. Yes. Yeah. Of just survival mode, fight, flight, freeze. Yes. Um, and all I knew, you know, I've been fighting my way through life. Since you were a tiny child. Um, since I was a tiny child. Yeah. Just, you know, just making things happen and fighting my way. I've been, you know, it just very much, uh, you know, like this warrior and in survival mode. And so to back to your original question, I, I just had to get, I had to, it had to be buried for me as this little ch child to s survive it. Right. Um, Which is very common. Very common. Oh That's my gosh. That's typically what happens, especially yeah. for a small child like that. Yeah. Yeah. And which, you know, another reason that, um, you know, psychedelics, when used the right way and with help, and, and, and I can't stress enough, if you're willing to do the work. Yeah. It's mandatory um, for it to be effective. It's so mandatory. Yeah. Um, then um, it can be life changing for so many people because, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've, been, I've done tons of therapy. I've done the, tons of work. I knew I was abused, but I... I truly didn't know that the depth and the severity of it and and ultimately also that the way it had been affecting me, you know, running in the background like a mall where I had no idea. The energy of it. Yeah, I didn't know that I that it had affected me so much. So um, with honestly, without the psychedelics, I don't know that it would have surfaced because it was buried so deep. Yeah. So so f surfaces and then there's so many layers after that. So so um, so back to the second one, which was, you know, learning to, okay, really process, you know, everything and, um, and lean into that, that darkness. And it's really like looking this big giant monster right in the eyeballs mm. to, to face all those fears. And I mean, it's terrifying. Those you're terrifying having to remember feelings. Them. Yeah. And feeling and so them. incredibly powerless and, um, you're basically reliving it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really what's happening, but right? you Yes. Yeah. And so I, you know, my gosh, I've, there's been so many tears and, um, uh, but it's all been good. So, so let me explain that after, after I started processing that, I found that I, I truly just, I, I, I couldn't be around people very much. And I, you know, I've lived in Phoenix for, you know, 50 years and I know a lot of people and I, my, and a lot of my family is here and I always feel like everybody wants a piece of me and I had nothing to give. It was so overwhelming. I had so much to process mm -hmm. because I was processing. It started with the loss of my child, which was the nonprofit, something that I gave birth to that I sacrificed everything in my life for out of pure love for mm. those kids. Yes. So it's my child. So I was processing the loss of my child. Then I had to start processing the loss of my childhood. Right. And the loss of my adulthood. Not the total loss, but but, but as I started to explore the ways that it, it had impacted me, which I'll which I'll talk about. Um, so it was a lot to process. Yeah. A lifetime so, worth. Yes. So I um, I'm like I just got to get out of here. I need time alone. I need silence. So I am so fortunate that I have, um, meanwhile, throughout all of this, of course, I have no income, right? <laughs> so uh, fortunately, I had saved, um, you know, when I was earning money with my business. So, um, but knew I needed to get out of here. But fortunately, you know, didn't want to spend a ton of money. Found a friend who ha had a house that I could stay in, in Mexico. So I went down to Mexico That's for cool. a month by myself. I love this. And I walked on the beach. I meditated. I prayed. I journaled. I read constant books. It was not a vacation. No. It was work. It was absolutely work. Deep, deep inner work. Deep inner work. Deep, 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 deep inner work. Yeah. Um, of course, I, I thought, well, I'll come back. I'll have a book written. I'll have my whole life figured out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're like, no, I need to process this first. <laughs> Let me just get back to breathing again. <laughs> right. So yeah, in my typical fashion. So yeah, exactly. none of those things happen, right? <laughs> check, check, check. No, no, no. 
<laughs> but I did come back with a stronger uh, sense of self-worth. And, um, and I had learned so much, but still so much learning came after. So then I come back from Mexico and it's, I was dissecting myself literally. Cause at this point now I'm like, okay, well I, I literally had to put myself on pieces all over the table and then, mm -hmm. and then look at each one with a magnifying glass and say, okay, well, what, what do I want to keep? What do I want to discard? I literally had to completely rebuild myself from the ground up. Mm. Um, and so is a, that's a long, hard process. Um, and okay, I'm going to keep this and keep this. All right, let's get rid of this. And um, it has been <laughs> almost an indescribable journey. Um, and, and meanwhile, then, you know, talking to therapists and journaling so much. Journaling, um, my God, I think I've written... <laughs> You've written uh, probably several books. Yeah, and uh, because it helps me process my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Journaling is a beautiful tool. Yes, and um, and meditating and really committing to doing that. And sometimes I would be um, meditating about you know looking forward, and then all of a sudden these tears would come up, and it was meditation that helped me lean into the pain. So one of the really important things that I learned, which is a really critical piece of anyone trying to get, get through trauma, because you don't get over it, <laughs> right. you get through it. That's right. And it, that is um, leaning into the pain and all yeah. the uncomfortable stuff that scares you. Mm -hmm. um, so every time it would happen, I, I, I'm like, my gosh, it's, there's still more coming up, but I, I just would, would lean into it. Um, and there, so it, it requires a lot of doing that. And, and part of you gets afraid that you're going to get stuck there. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. You're like, wait a minute. I don't want to go too yeah, far in because I want to be able to get back there. out. I want to, yeah, I want to be that person I used to be. And I want to have fun. Yeah. I feel happy. Yeah. But it turns out that it's such a healthy thing to do and you can't avoid it. Now, I mean, I wasn't really given the choice. I, I, I processed everything I thought I had to process, but I didn't know how much was, was buried in my subconscious. Um, and, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll be positive, and I'll be a warrior, and I'll change the world. And, and, but that's not enough. You have to. It's, it, you know, for, for um, anyone who's lived through the, the kind of trauma that I have, they will at some point in their life, it's, it's going to be staring them right in the face. Can we talk about your trauma a little bit? Mm-hmm. So because it was child sexual abuse on a lot sexual physical uh, physical emotional psychological everything um yeah every every level every level yeah. i just want to clarify so people have people that are listening they can relate it to their own stuff because some people have different categories of different things so when you talk about those things again just reiterating on as a child you truly are powerless because you cannot leave right. and you're, you're stuck essentially, um, which is where that, that, like you said, it's been pushed so far so deeply because you had no way out. So the only way through it was yeah. to push it down mm -hmm. and wake up the next day. And then, you know, to further complicate it, so to speak, um, when there's someone there that you want to save you and to stop it and they don't, um, it's that it makes it worse, mm -hmm. um, especially if that continues into your adulthood, um, because it really, when it, when a, when a parent, when, if a child's going through abuse and, and a parent denies the reality f of, you know, takes that reality away from that child, it's, um, you, then the child begins to question the reality and their and question their feelings, and then then you learn not to trust yourself. Um, mm, you start to doubt yourself. You start to completely doubt yourself, and you don't trust somebody yourself. Somebody else is like okay, is okay with this happening or allowing it to happen. So you're then thinking, so should I just be okay with this? Like, is it me? Yeah. You start to doubt yourself. You start to doubt yourself, and then and then you doubt yourself long enough, and then just, that does you know, a job on you. Oh yeah, and so then you know then you start looking outward, you know for. You don't trust yourself to, to be able to, but you don't trust yourself for anything, certainly to be able to protect yourself. 
um, to make the right decisions um, because your reality is literally, I mean, it, it robs you of, it robs the child of, um, of, of self-worth, of um, their power, self-efficacy, you know, f feeling safe. Well, and, you know, your, worthiness, and your worthiness. Living, yeah, and absolutely. I mean, you feel uh, like you're completely overseen. Yeah. And, and then when you, when you try to speak out and it just gets brushed under the rug. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so I didn't even, now I really fully grasp the impact. Right. There's so um, many layers to this. So many layers. Yeah, so many layers. So, um, and I'll get into all the amazing things that I've learned. Um, it has seriously been just the most incredible journey. Not easy. When, when we last spoke, I talked about Rainier. I had gone through a rough time and, I, and that, was my, that was my way to get my flame back. I would say that this, um, this past year has been a thousand Rainiers. Mm. It's required a lot of courage, a lot of commitment. Uh, yeah. But you know what is cool is that you know you can do it. Yes. You knew that about yourself. And that's why, like you were saying before, people that choose to go this route, they really want to surface this stuff. You better be ready. What's on the other side of it? Yes. It ain't easy. In fact, no. it's really freaking hard. Yeah. And, you know, I've had to learn to give myself grace. My God, Karen, this has taken so long. And then, I, and then I'd be doing better. And then something would happen. You get triggered. and Something would trigger me. Um, I would hear about lies and stuff and, and it's just you know I'm gonna I'm gonna talk more about my worth well let me just talk about it now you know when so when I came back from Mexico and I, I came back with stronger self-worth I I started to learn what that even truly is explain that it is not self-confidence I can tell you that right self-confidence um even without self-worth you can you can gain that because you can get this is how I did I, I would get A's Accolades. Yeah, I would get scholarships, um, awards. I would achieve things. And so I was able mm -hmm. to build my confidence. Yes. And so to the outside world, you know, I, I've accomplished so much in my lifetime on, on a variety of levels. To the outside world, I look like, you know, I've never had a care in the world, much less that I, I didn't have the strongest self-worth. So, well, and um, you did it with a smile on your face. Yeah. And um, I, I truly didn't know, but when, when you know, I went through that with the nonprofit, it, boy, it triggered me so deep, and I felt so incredibly betrayed, and, you know, and so what I learned about myself is that I, I thought that if I am nice enough, it was so important to me that everybody liked me. And, you know, and another thing that, that when you go through childhood abuse, you, uh, it robs you of, of boundaries. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know how you're supposed to be treated. And, and it was so important for me that everybody liked me. If I'm nice enough and everybody likes me enough and if I accomplish enough and, you know, if I help enough people and, if, you know, if I'm perfect enough and then, then no one will hurt me and no one will betray me. Right. But that's, that's seeking outward for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And in reality, in my attempt to prevent people from hurting me and betraying me, what did I attract? People that hurt me and betray me. Right. And if I'm willing to sacrifice myself yeah. the way that I did for so long, then I'm teaching other people how to treat me. If, if, that's, all, that, if that's how I value myself, well, then how do I expect other people to value me. So, so in, in reality, I ended up attracting, you know, I was surrounded by parasites. Right. So, um, it, it's if really, unless you've, I mean, I don't know, maybe there are people that can relate that if you haven't been through trauma. I, I don't know, but, um, it's like it self-sabotage. Yeah. And, and so I, what I, well, actually I, it's the law of attraction. Yeah. I mean, it's the yeah, universal well, well, And law. what you resist persists, right? I'm resisting. Exactly. Okay, just don't hurt me. and Just like me. Don't hurt me. Don't it's betray gonna me. It's going to come in harder and faster. And then, right? You're attracting it. I'm attracting. Yeah. You're creating so, your world. 
And then, and then when, when your worth is, is based on that, and then what happens, you know, happened to me, and then, um, and then I would hear about lies and stuff, and oh, I'm just, and I finally had to get the point, it's like, Karen, if people are gonna believe those lies, then not yours, you can't not worry yours. about it. Yeah, it's not yours. You, you know the truth. And even if you're the one who ever knows the truth, then that has to be enough. And, and that's I hate, huge. Now, now that, that is self-worth. Yes. So I, I finally get it. Oh my gosh, I'm covered in goosebumps because I remember when you were really, before you went on these journeys and we talked about the things that happened in your nonprofit situation and the things, same things that are being recreated in your life, right? Mm -hmm. and how you would talk about these things. And I would listen and I would think, she's really stuck in this and it's mm -hmm. it's creating more. It's I like she's piling, so, you were piling it onto yourself. Yeah, I was so, it was triggering my core wounds so deeply um, and I yeah. and I was aware. And then and then I would beat myself up more because you know, well, what the heck is wrong with you, Karen? Because I've never, I mean, I felt like a victim right. and I, I've spent my life trying to be the anti-victim. But I knew <laughs> right. I just was, you know, just you need to give yourself some compassion <laughs> yourself. Yes. Some compassion. Yeah. To be where you were. Yeah. So I've, I've learned to give myself grace and, um, you know, I've, I've always known and I, I knew at some point I was, well, the, I, I, I was in such, I mean, I was just devastated, completely devastated. And so I, what I, you know, I always believe, you know, things happen for you, not to you. And, and, and with my childhood. But wait, let me pause you for a second. Okay. You say that things happen for you, not to you. There's a big thing in that because you can say that, but when you're living it, are you really believing it? Do you think that there was points in your life when you weren't believing that even though we're saying that? Because there's a big difference. Well, yes. And, and I have a whole, so much to say just on that topic, but, um, well, when I was a, a kid, obviously, I you know I I couldn't get to that point until I had was old enough had to, more to create my own life and yes. take you know uh, what I thought was you know power, uh, right? <laughs> regain, trying to regain my power, um, but which is a whole other thing. I've, I've realized now that I've been giving it away my whole life, um, but then. I, I, I truly was able to see it and believe it. Now going, th and, I, and I want to talk more about that, but on, on, on this time, I, I kept telling myself, Karen, this is happening for you. This is happening for you. I couldn't see it. I'm like, you can't see it now, but you will just trust and faith that you- And you had faith that, 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 that was real. That you will see it. There were times it, I was in so much pain because what was happening wouldn't stop mm. and it just kept coming and it was getting worse. And you were afraid you were gonna get stuck I in it. I felt like I was getting attacked by the devil. I mean, it, it, it just, it went on so long um, and it just seemed to get worse. And I just kept, you know, trying to take the high road and, but it it just, it, it, it just felt like it was never gonna stop. And, and I was in so much pain that I, I you know, I, I couldn't see it at the time. I kept telling myself, this is happening for you. But I, I, I was so confused because now, well, let me just say, now I cl very clearly see absolutely, and I can't wait to talk about that. Absolutely, it happened for me, so clear. But going through it, yeah. it was not, it was hard to figure out how, because I'm thinking, well, Okay, I knew that my life had gotten completely out of control. So first I give up my business, my 30-year career, and my nice income. Then I end up giving up the nonprofit too. So the two things I spent my life building, I've given up. So that, that's a huge commitment to make to get balance back in my life. Yes. So I'm like, so, but I already- Especially when you were seeking outside sources to get your value. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, so why then do why why is this happening? I already gave everything up. Right. Everything. You're like, what, I've what given else? up everything. Yeah. So why this? What what happened? Which I won't go into details, but it was very very painful, and um, I I couldn't figure it out then. 
but I know now. Mm. Um, and I just want to touch on my childhood because there's, it's sort of like two, is the two pieces. I, I was able to realize that what happened for me as a child happened, or what happened to me as a child happened for me. And, um, and also there's the, the gratitude piece because you cannot, I mean, and thank goodness I learned this early. Um, and that's one of my, the money, one of the many gifts that I got out of what I went through is that you cannot be happy without gratitude. And, that, and you've got to be grateful for everything, not just the good stuff yeah. in your life. That's a tough one for us. Yeah, you've got to be really grateful even for the, the really hard stuff. And so my childhood, you know, I'm like, well, okay, so I, I learned to be grateful for that, truly grateful and lived my life that way because I got all these gifts from it. I was able to reach levels of amazing things, at, at, at depths of, of things that I wouldn't have reached otherwise, of empathy, passion, compassion, uh, gratitude, joy, inspiration, all these amazing things that have, that, you know, led me to live this really rich, rewarding life. So I'm like, okay, you know, I, I can be grateful for my child. And, and I was able to change, you know, to make a huge impact on the lives of thousands of kids in need. So my gosh, what a gift is that? So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for even what I went through as a kid because I got all of those gifts. Living through this last one was so hard. It's like, how can this be for me? But now it is so clear. It literally had to completely mirror my childhood Mm -hmm. To get my attention, just like, you know, um, you know, to get my, I, I'm so strong willed that my body has to be completely falling apart right. to like get my attention. Time. My central nervous system has to get shut down. So it literally, um, it had to cause me so much pain that I would be willing to stop the world. Which you have done. Which I have done. Without question. I've never seen in my, and I know a lot of people, and what I know about the people that I know, I've never seen anybody that has truly stopped everything they're doing to heal as much as I've seen you do it since I've known you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been, and I've told you this, and so many things have come out just with you and I together and sessions and things we've done. Um, I've never seen so much self-healing go on in one person so dedicated to it it's it's incredible thank you that that's so nice to hear it's incredible it's 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 real I've I'm witness to it I've seen it I've seen your I've seen you transform in front of me thank you thank you for acknowledging that it means a lot it's the truth I mean I really have seen it we've talked about this in our journey together and how it's how we've intersected and why and I've told you the things that we've seen when we did our session together, your heart healing session that we did, mm -hmm. like the things that came through and the, uh, the awarenesses that I was shown about you and really who you are was breathtaking. I mean, and not, I, it's like, I already knew it, <laughs> but then when I really saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> wow, that's incredible. So not only have I experienced it and felt it just by watching you literally in this physical world do these things, but then when we've dug deep and I've seen visions of who you are and what you're doing, wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. I told you I feel like I'm in the presence of the queen. <laughs> You've done some amazing things for yourself, and you're going to continue to do amazing things for yourself, which is going to impact the world. Thank you. I feel that. I um, There's not a question in my mind. Yeah. Now, I'm more purpose-driven than ever. And what I lived through before, um, you know, it gave me such purpose, you know, throughout my lifetime. And, um, and you know, having gone through everything that I've gone through these last couple of years, uh, I... I just feel like it would be a, a waste. That's that's a lot of pain to go through. It would be a waste to not use it to help others. And that's why I'm sitting here right now. 
um, I will, yeah, I will find a purpose for that pain. Well, the purpose so that I can is be you. super. I mean, I'm really grateful for the many things that I've learned, and I have so much more to talk about. Um, but I, I just feel inside me there's something even bigger. Oh, yeah. That's, no, there's something really beautiful that's going to come out of that pain. Mm. It yeah. already is. It's starting to evolve yeah. now. I've been witness yeah. to it. Thank you. And I have. It's been, like I said, it's been awe-inspiring and really cool. And I'm just, I just, am, I feel so grateful for our friendship. Me too. I'm so grateful to have you along in this beside me on this journey. Yeah. Yeah. It's been powerful. Yeah. It's it soul has. sisters. Well, uh, so let me uh, just remind the audience here that um, at the same time I had uh, s decided to step down from Kids in Focus essentially to save my health, uh, you had decided to sell the magazines. And so, um, and when, when we met and we told the other, you know, that we were leaving and we, we couldn't believe it. So, <laughs> No, We've, we have literally been on, on parallel journeys. Yes, 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 without yes. without question. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> I mean, when we're together, it's like ah, oh, like we're looking in the mirror. <laughs> I mean, our journeys are different, but yeah, different, yes, but yeah. yes, different, yes. It's, but we're parallel. both on a yes, path. Yes, big time. yes, it's been fun to be together on it. <laughs> yes, yes, and every time that we get together, I, I always leave with some beautiful nugget to help me help me Same. along the way there's yeah. just a level of inspiration that's what's so cool about and this is one of the things I'm most grateful for in my life is that not only do I get the blessings of the people that I'm around that I've attracted because I know I've attracted them um but is the acknowledgement and awareness around how amazing they are and what gifts they are because you could be around somebody that you really love and you enjoy their company and you have a lot in common and you're on a similar path and you're going through these things together through friendship, you know, whatever. But when you really dig down and you can see how amazing the connection is, it reminds you how truly connected we are. I mean, we are one. It's, it's unreal to me. And when you get glimpses of it through friendships like yours and mine mm -hmm. you are like it's mind-blowing because there's this is just one little itty bitty thing and mm -hmm. it's everywhere well you know that's been one of the one of my many lessons in this journey is I I always thought I was alone I've always been a, a huge lone wolf mm -hmm. out there fighting against the world all by myself and never um I didn't I honestly didn't feel um, that the universe ever had my back. And I remember um, once years ago, a, a therapist asking me, do you feel like, do you think the universe has your back? And I was like, no. And that's been part of my spiritual journey is now I, um, I know that I'm supported. Mm. And that, um, and, and the, the you know, whatever your name is for it, the, you know, the great spirit, God, the universe, whatever that is for you, that to, to me, that doesn't matter, mm -mm. but you've, it's just a you term. Know, it's just a term. But now I know, um, I'll, I'll just say that the universe has actually has my back because, um, now that I'm learning all these important lessons, the, the, the things that are being placed in front of me, at just the right time. It's truly miraculous. It's miracles. Yes. Just like what you were talking about, you know, our coming together and being on this journey together. Um, so now for the first time, I feel like I am supported and I'm not alone. And that's huge. That is so huge. When I was going through all that pain and I, I, I felt like I was being attacked by the devil and I had... Um, I, I could, I mean, it wasn't sleeping, sick to my stomach all the time. And I had a, a dream. I was laying in bed. I don't know if it was a dream or I was awake because it was, you know, a very fine line between them when you're, when you're not sleeping. Right. Um, and I literally, God came to me mm. and said, I will protect you. I will protect you. 
So then that same morning, I had to drop my car off uh, at the dealership for something. So I, I ca- uh, call it an Uber to go pick up my car. This is the same day. Literally soon, soon after that, I had this vision that God's saying, I'm going to protect you. Um, I get in the, the, the car and the Uber driver, her name is Mary. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and she, uh, she was just so sweet. She's this older lady, and she was so sweet and so complimentary. And I just said, oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet. I said, that's actually so nice to hear because I'm going through a really, really, you know, challenging time. I said, you know, I feel like I'm just surrounded by evil. And she took a bracelet off of her wrist and handed it to me Aww. and said, this will protect you. And I wore, I wore that bracelet, you know, every, you know for a long time, you know, everybody since just little signs like that. If you are, if you are open to it, but if you, if you're so convinced that you're alone, you're not going to see it. And I was so busy and I know you've, you know, you, you and I have talked about it. I know you've talked about it on, on this podcast about the masculine energy. I was so busy fighting my way Mm -hmm. through life. In fact, during that one, uh, the journey in, um, in mid January, when I was telling her about the, the choking that I had experienced. And it, and, it, and it came up many times. It even came up in meditation. So it, 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 it was something that clearly needed to be released. And um, I was telling her about it. And so she thought maybe it was related to my birth. She says, well, what happened in, in your birth? She was thinking it was maybe the, the umbilical cord. But I explained, no, my, um, my mom was ready to deliver me. And the doctor wasn't there. So the nurses sat my mom up on the table so I couldn't come out. I still can't believe that. And so, you know, so basically, you know, I'm, I'm trying to come out and I'm hitting a table. And so she said, oh my gosh, Karen, you have been fighting your way through this world <laughs> since even before your first breath. And I'm like, oh, wow, yeah. And so um, one of the, the, the many beautiful things that I've learned is that... Um, you know, and, and it's, it's really well summarized in the whole masculine versus feminine energy thing is um, just be and attract. And so, and, and I've read so many books, a lot of constantly reading. Um, and, and each one has been so helpful. I'm always getting something really powerful. And so th- through all, all of this, I, I'm, I keep hearing about this concept of, you know, the attraction and... And it's balance of masculine. Oh my gosh. I'm like, just like, wait, what? (laughs) I'm supposed to just, uh, just sit here and it's going to attract. And so coming, you know, that's been the opposite of my life. I just go out and I make it happen. And I figure out exactly how it's going to happen. I'm going to do this my way. (laughs) And then I go make it happen at all costs. And you do. I do. This is what's ironic about how we can perceive this. And I think this is where some people get stuck. Because they're like, well, but I can work hard and look what I did. And they yes, see it because you can You can do it both ways. I know, but look at everything I did. <laughs> right. You can do it both ways. Yeah. Both ways is possible for you, but would you rather? But, but look, look at, yeah, the, look at the other side of the coin. Yeah. From the outside. Yeah. I've, you know, this, here's this person who's done all these things, but the flip side is, is that I've destroyed my health multiple times over my life. Um, so uh, so that's the cost. There's well, always the feminine's a cost. going, you know, yeah. you, there's an easier way. Right. If you just sit down and <laughs> shut up for a minute. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And so now I'm finally like slowing down and learning to listen. And that's why, med- you know, yes. that's one of the many gifts of meditation is it, it gives you that opportunity to, to slow down and to listen, to s- kind of uh, listen to your heart because uh, your your mind can keep yourself pretty busy in those loops, um, and and so now I'm 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 so grateful that I I I, I really do feel that I'm that I'm attracting um, what's meant for me. Well, the whole and conversation makes me really tells me and reminds me that we are truly we are constantly in creation mode. Mm-hmm. We are. By nature, creators. And by creators, I mean we are creating our experience. So if you want to magnetize 
a really tough way of life, you're going to get it. Right. And if you want to magnetize a really pleasant, joyful, peaceful way of life, you're going to get it. But here's the key. Mm -hmm. And this is what you said, which is the whole crescendo of why we are creators and how we create is the reason, Karen, things are coming into your path so magically, as you say, is because you are feeling Mm -hmm. and you're transmuting. So you're coming back to center. And you're balancing that masculine and feminine energy, which is ultimately what's creating the life that you actually want to live. And it's coming so much easier to you. Doesn't make it easier because you still got to feel, like you said, you had to go to the pits of darkness. I was going to say the pits of hell. (laughs) And and I say this a lot. They don't stop. They're going to keep coming in other ways. And like you said, you still got to let it in. Yep. And as soon as you do, the more you do that, the easier they begin to lift and release. And they don't stick around and become these bricks that we carry around that make life so hard to walk through. It makes us lighter you know, and attraction, attracting what we want. One, um, when I did the very first journey, what came up was not mine to carry. Mm-hmm. And that has come up for me continually throughout this journey is I had gotten so used to carrying everything else that people were throwing on me. I thought it was my job that I had to carry it. And um, I finally feel free of that. Like I've shaken it all off. And it's, it's, you know, other people, it's other people's journeys and it's not yours to judge. Mm -mm. It's not yours to carry. Mm-mm. So, you know, forgive and move on. Um, but if you think that what has been done to you is a reflection of who you are it, and you personalize it, and that's, then, then you're carrying the weight of all that. And so I had That's those been, bricks that are piling yes, up Yes, I've been of you. so trained. My brain was wired as a little kid that, you know, because there's so, there's so much manipulation and stuff that goes on as well, that... I was trained to, you know, think that it, it, it that I was personalizing it, mm-hmm. and anytime things would happen in life, then I'd personalize it, and um, so you know, even now I realize that um, that I, I, how much I was carrying, um, I was carrying a lot of other people's stuff, but and ma- it doesn't have anything to do with me. The magic in it, though, is that when you have that new awareness, you attract less of that. Yes. Oh, yes. I mean that the, that pull is is less, and it, then you there's can, still stuff. It's there's always going to be always going to be stuff. But how you handle it, and how you view it, and how what it does to you, which is ultimately only in your control. How am I going to respond to whatever's out here that I like or don't like? How am I responding to it? And right. when you can. If, you, if it affects you in a negative way that you don't like the feelings of it, it's like, okay, well, let that in. Okay, that hurt. Ugh, didn't like that. i sit with that for a minute. I don't like this feeling, but it's real. So there it is. Okay, well, maybe it's not so bad, actually. Actually, it really doesn't have anything to do with me. Oh, I can let that go. And then the mm-hmm. next time that same thing happens, you may see it for five seconds less. You may not even see it the next time. It may just bounce right off of you and you may be like, it doesn't affect you. Right. Well, and an important part of that process too is, um, okay, what do I, what do I have to learn from this? Because every challenge, you know, is, is happening for you. Yes. And the bigger the challenge, and I knew this going into what happened with the nonprofit, but it was so, so big and so painful that it was hard to see the light of day. But now, now I can see it. Everything happens for you. It's, it's a, everything's a lesson. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you can just look at every situation, figure out, okay, what do I have to learn here? What am I to learn from this? And then, and then let go of the rest and realize, you know, the rest of it's not personal. Yeah, so um, I am feeling really empowered and stronger than ever and ready to handle whatever's going to come my way. And, and once you've looked the 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 big scary demons, those monsters directly in the eyes, and you've sat with it, um, then 
you can really learn to trust yourself and, and not be afraid uh, of anything or anyone because you can trust yourself to be able to handle it and protect yourself from it. And I didn't trust that I, that I could, mm. that I could truly protect myself because I didn't have healthy boundaries. But now, um, now I, I have learned and so I'm just super empowered. It's like, okay, next challenge, bring it on. What do I have to learn? Um, so anyway, I forgot, I forgot what we were originally talking about because I know we went on, on yeah, off in a couple <laughs> tangents. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I want to make sure that I, that I talk about the whole victim thing because it's so important. And I've fought, you know, I've spent my life being such an anti-victim. I'm saving the world. You don't want to be a martyr. But I was, I, but I was not saving myself. Well, I, you know, I started carrying so so many people's stuff, and then I lost my balance, um, and lost the ability to do that. But um, I just forgot what I was saying. <laughs> well, you were talking about um, uh, what was the word you used? You were talking about being a victim. Oh yes, thank you. So. Um, what, I, what I've learned is that, um, and, and for the first time in my life, when, when all that was going on, and it just, it, it wouldn't stop, and I didn't understand why any of it was happening. Um, and for the first time in my life, I felt, I, I mean, I knew I was in victim energy, but I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to get out of it. I was, you know, I, I, I had to go through that whole journey to get out of it. But when you were at, when you were saying you, you, you were, you were anti-victim for the world too. You're like, you're not a victim. Pick yourself up. You were thinking that out there, right? Too. Or just for yourself? For myself. Okay. No. And I felt, you know, I, I just was, you know, I wanted to help other kids, you know, elevate their, themselves, you know, from the, the same thing that Got I had, had okay. endured. Um, no, but just for myself. Okay. Um, so, and I, and I wanted to, like, my God, I, I, I feel and I sound like a victim. Um, but I guess I had to go through that. And, and I realized that, that I had been living as a victim in ways in my life that I, I was unaware. Hmm. And, you know, I know in the last podcast we talked about, you know, my pushing myself. And, and I had... Um, during the process, uh, during this journey, realized, okay, it's, it's almost as if I punish myself. You know, what is that? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of layers to it for me, but one of them is there's, you know, this victim loop. We've got victim, perpetrator, enabler. And I'm like, no, I'm, you know, when people say, well, you know, they, a lot of people that are, are, are abused as a kid end up abusing others. Mm -hmm. And then and, and they, they, it becomes this loop. I realized, oh my God, I am an abuser. Yeah. I abuse Yourself. myself. Yeah. And it was this huge revelation, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. How did you handle that? That's big, that's big that's uh, so awareness. Big. Yeah. That must have blown your mind. It blew my mind. And it took me so long to get there. And I kept, I mean, even that, that punishment piece was all, in all these layers. And if, and then I thought, um, uh, there was one time a friend said, you know, look yourself in the, in the mirror. And I, now I sit like a whole day aside each week for myself so that I can journal and meditate. And it's like Tammy Tuesday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'll have to come up. It's, I usually do Sunday. Um, come up with my own little term for that. But, um, on one of those days, I, my friend said, you know, look in the mirror, you know, really close and tell yourself that, you know, I love you, Karen. That's so hard I, for people to do. Oh, my God. So I put my elbows on the bathroom <laughs> counter and I lean into the mirror. <laughs> and I'm staring right into my eyes and I couldn't say it. And I was, I was surprised. And so for 10 minutes, I just sat there and I looked. And I, and what, what the message that came to me was that I need to do forgive myself. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I was so confused. Like, what do I have to forgive myself for? And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm thinking, is it that I need to forgive myself for feeling like a victim for the first time in my life? Um, 
I thought that's what it was, but then, you know, then you just, you just keep at it and you keep digging and you keep digging and you just keep surfacing and journaling and meditating. And so then eventually it came up. I'm like, oh my God, that's what I have to forgive myself for. My little girl feels abandoned by me. Yes. Well, you, and also you were, you realized that you were an abuser of yourself. So you also need to forgive yourself for that too. Yes. I had to forgive. That's what I had to forgive myself for. And, and that's part of the punishment is that I had to forgive myself for abusing myself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, that's a big awareness. It was so big. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Cause it, 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 it showed you where this was coming from. Yeah. And why. And, and also and, and, and it, it, it explains to me why I was attracting that. Cause if I'm abusing myself, what am I going to attract? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, 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 really big one. Well, and judgment's a big piece of that too, because when we judge things outside of us, like we see abuse or something negative happening outside of us, like you were, you were judging the people that you saw abusing you Mm -hmm. in your adult life. Mm -hmm. You were judging them and you were pissed. Mm -hmm. Judgment, judgment, they're bad, they're bad. Judging myself, judging others. All of it. Yeah, but really when we're judging anything outside of ourselves, really truly, it's time to look in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Cuz whatever it is we're seeing out there that we're not liking, it's something we don't like about ourselves. Yeah. And you were abusing yourself. I was abusing myself. And you didn't like that, so you were pissed at them because they were abusing you, but really you were abusing you. Yep. And exactly. that was the mirror moment and you couldn't even <laughs> literally in a mirror and you yeah. couldn't even say it. Yeah. Cuz you yeah. had to forgive yourself. That's yeah. big. That's so big. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So I finally understand what, what self-worth is, mm-hmm. what self-love is. Yeah. And um, it feels um, safe, you know, because I, when, you, when you grow up in a home where it's unsafe, um, you're, you, you, and any victim of childhood abuse is always seeking safety. Mm-hmm. And I've got everything here now. Mm-hmm. So I, I truly have that self-worth and it's like, no one, no one can hurt me anymore. Well, like you said, the universe, God source has your back. Yep. Faith, trust, yep. surrender. Yeah. So, so the flip side of, uh, you know, the, the victim loop is, is from victim to creator and from, um, from abuser to challenger. And so, you know, looking at all of these people that I've, have felt so betrayed by, they, they've been my, they've been my challenger challengers Mm -hmm. because as long as I, um, if, as long as I feel like a victim, then I'm tying myself to the experience of victimization and And attracting more of it and attracting more of it. And, you know, I want to live in triumph and spiritual victory so, um, freedom, freedom, freedom. That is such a big word. Yes. Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. So gosh, I mean, so many lessons I could continue to share for probably another two hours. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the thing that I love about, and like I was, when we said we first started talking was just, this is a never ending journey. Even when we're not even in these bodies, it continues on just, we're just in another form. We're learning in another way. We're growing and expanding in other ways. We're still creators. We're still part of the whole connection of the whole matrix. And <clears throat> that's what's so beautiful about it because when we can really see the bigger side of our connection to everything that is, it makes life's tough moments sometimes gives a perspective. It's like, is it really that bad? Maybe not. I accept I feel it. It's real. It's part of my experience, but maybe I could look at this another way. You know, it just makes it a little easier to endure some of those outside forces that come in to test us. I mean, they're just tests. They're Mm -hmm. just, like you said, they're lessons. They're just lessons that we learn. They're ways we grow. They're ways we expand. And the beauty of the design is that it never ends. Yeah. I mean, it really, I've said this, it's the perfect design. It's brilliant. And that's why we are such perfect beings of light that are connected to God, source, universe, everything there is. Yeah. I mean, we're all the same and it's so brilliant 
how it works. It is. It I mean, it's it's incomprehensible in this form to really understand it with what we've got here. Yeah. It just is. That's why yeah. it's in here and it's deeper. And when you can get more quiet and expand, you can get just a glimpse mm -hmm. of what really is going on. And it's like, oh, like you said, I have everything I need right here. Mm -hmm. It's all right here. It's my connection. It's me. Yep. It's beautiful. I, I have to tell you, Karen, I, I'm so grateful for your open and honesty around difficult life topics and things and events that have happened to you. And I do feel strongly, and I've said this to you before, <clears throat> excuse me, that you um, will help many, many, many people in this world. You already are. And it starts with you helping yourself, which is what has been your biggest turning point yes. as of late, yep. which is where the magic is, right? Mm -hmm. So the ripple effects of that, which is what I always say, that's the whole premise of everything we talk about here is when you can pour love back into yourself, the ripple effects are massive. I mean, massive, incomprehensible, mm -hmm. massive. So I'm grateful to you for loving yourself and being willing to do the work because it takes deep, 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 like you said, inner work. Yeah. And it takes facing things that you don't want to face, that don't feel good, that you don't like, um, to come out of the other side of it. Because you're right, you don't you don't overcome them, you, you go through them. You have to go through it, yep. And you're doing that. And you'll continue to do it. And it's it's beautiful to see. It's beautiful to witness. It's it's refreshing. Thank you. So I feel uh, so much lighter mm. not carrying all that. You've let a lot of it out. You're like, yeah. I don't, I'm not going to put that down. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. not yours to carry. Yep. Not mine to carry. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You also said last time, happiness is a choice. Mm. And that is a choice. Happiness is truly a choice and it's a state of being. And yeah. when we can remember that we do have that choice and nothing outside of us can take that away from us, there's light in that too. So yeah, huge light in that. And I've, another thing I've always said, and it has, you know, even a deeper meaning to me now is bitter or better. Those right. are your, those are your choices, right? You know, everybody goes through stuff in life. And you have that choice to make. Yep. It's, it's going to change you. Yes. But you get to choose how. Yes. Is it going to make you bitter? Or is it going to make you better? Right. And so it's sort of been my motto throughout my life. And, um, and now here I am faced, you know, faced with those, <laughs> those big lessons again. You know, okay, I, I want to be grateful and I, and I want to be better and I, I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to carry any of that. Mm -hmm. And so I knew, and I was in so much pain, I knew, I, I'm like, I've got some work to do because I'm hurting. Yeah. And I'm feeling like a victim and, and you know, I got, I got some serious work to do because I want to be better. I don't want to, I'm not going to, like, I've kept my heart open this far. You know, I don't want to close it up now or harden it now. So you know like, too much. Yeah, it's like I got I got some work to do so that I can, you know, keep like it can be better and and shine my light brightly and keep keep my my heart open. And so I um, I will be I already am and I know I'll even be more so grateful for what happened because of all the amazing gifts that I got. Um, I've gotten so much more freedom in my life. Mm. Yeah, like you said, you feel so yeah. much lighter. Yeah, I feel lighter. Yeah, and I am wiser and stronger and and better equipped now to help other people even more yeah. than I was before. Well, that's the cool thing about when you step into your deep inner work and have new awarenesses about the beauty of yourself and really the value and worthiness of yourself mm -hmm. is that you can't help but want to share it. You want everybody to feel like that. You're like, oh my gosh, let me share this with you. I want to, I want to just be a beacon. So, and it's not that you're pushing it on them because everybody's on their own journey and you know, when they, when, when the paths are meant to meet and when they're not, it's just mm -hmm. part of the path, part of the whole experience. But when you can truly step into your own light, you, you just by default become a beacon of light and you affect other people. That's the ripple effect I'm talking about when mm -hmm. you can step into that and pour that into yourself and realize 
I'm okay. Not only am I okay, I'm amazing. <laughs> I mean, I'm a brilliant light of love. That's all I am. So mm -hmm. yeah, let's like, let it shine. Why do I want to hide that? People are so afraid of letting their light shine. Yeah. Let your light shine. That's what I, you came here to do. I've always kept myself so small yes. to keep, you know, other people comfortable. Yes. I mean, literally to the point I would, if I was feeling, I, I wasn't talking to people and I was the tallest one, I would literally physically hunch over so they didn't feel intimidated by my height. Always making myself small. It doesn't help me and that doesn't help anybody else. No. No. Because I, because I thought that, I thought somehow that would keep me safe. And people would like me and they wouldn't hurt me. Right. Well, well and also, like we said, I, I attracted the opposite. Exactly. Well, and it, it, there's, there's a big difference between shining your light and letting your ego take you over there. Those are two very different things. Yes, shining your different. light is really your pure, you are authentic. You are genuine. You are honest. You are, I am where I am. Like it or not, <laughs> here it is. But the more we can be that, this has been a huge lesson for me and I'm still learning it big time, um, is that, I don't need to be anything but me. Right. And if you don't like that, that's okay. Right. So I'm okay with that. I don't need to have you like me. I don't need to have you think that I look good. I don't need right. to have you accept me because as long as I do, that's really all that matters anyway. So it's, it's that it's, and, and naturally when you do that, your light shines. Your light shines. Yeah. You can't when help when it. You're, when you're authentically standing in your power and just being you. Um, and, and being love and giving love, mm -hmm. then your light shines bright. Yes. And if you're, you know, you make it so small, you're just dimming it. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I want people, I encourage people. And that's why I talk so much about pouring into yourself and seeing the beauty that you are, because we're all such brilliant, beautiful lights of love that want to connect. And if we're dark, no one can find us. So turn your light on so we can like come together and make it brighter light. Cause that's what really what we're doing here, mm -hmm. you know, and it makes you just like, wow, that's really cool. Let people shine their light. And, and when you see someone else's light, don't compare. You're different. We're right. all different. We all have unique fingerprints. We all have unique abilities and gifts and ways of speaking and ways to share with the world what we are. There is no comparison. Everyone is unique to what we do. It's like a human body. Every cell does something different for the body. No two cells are doing the same thing. So be your own light and let yourself shine so you can function for everything that is. Amen. And, right? Yep. I mean, it's just, I, 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 it's so hard when I see people that, like you said, get small. I've done it. I, I lived it for a long time. Or I've seeked outside to think that that was my light. Yeah. So I have one thing I want to say before we close. Okay. And it's important. Okay. And that's responsibility. Mm. That's where freedom is. That's where it comes from. And you can't be responsible for what happens to you. But you are responsible for what you do with it. Yes. And there's just, you know, if it, 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 it absolutely applies to anyone who's who's been through trauma, but it really is for anyone because everyone goes through hard stuff in, in, in their life. If you're a person, you are, yeah. And um, it is it is not an easy thing to do, especially in life's you know real big challenges. But that's on the other side of that is is true freedom, right? It is freedom. Yeah. And you're right. The responsibility to ourselves is all we have. Mm -hmm. That is all we have. When I when I came back from Mexico and I um, I had just you know had that month to myself and and then I, I came home and there was all these people that wanted to see me getting and, integrated and, back into and like, Whoa. I I was trying to integrate back into life and I was feeling overwhelmed and and I was feeling anxiety mm -hmm. and I was and I. You know, throughout all of this, I realized, oh my gosh, how much anxiety I create myself. It's ridiculous. And I'm, I'm feeling anxiety because, you know, everybody wants a little piece of me. And I don't want to disappoint any, anybody. And I realized, oh, my gosh, Karen, you, are, you feel so responsible for everyone else. Yeah. 
and their feelings mm. that it's, you know, it's, it's been um, exhausting me my whole life. <laughs> yes. So also learn, yeah, learning uh, to be and those responsible. Are boundaries. And those are boundaries yeah, too. Responsible, responsible for myself. Yes. And my boundaries and protecting myself and all that stuff. Demanding it for yourself. Yes. Because you choose you first. You have to yeah. be centered in self before you can do anything else. A lot, a lot of people who've been through trauma, they, they become extreme people pleasers. That's me. Absolutely. Yeah. That was me. It's common. Well, yeah. like you're, you're growing, you're evolving. Yes. Yeah. No. Well, this was an amazing conversation, just like I knew it would be. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you too. You know how much I love you. Um, and I, I can't wait to see what evolves in your future because your future is so bright, my friend. I mean, so I'm getting goosebumps. Um, I've seen, I've seen things that I'm just in awe of. So I can't wait to see what happens. So you all should follow this one because there's some big <laughs> things coming with this one. So thank you for being here. I, I love you. Oh, my pleasure. It would have been truly an honor to share it. Good. Uh, to everybody listening, I hope you got a lot out of this. I, of course, always do. And if you feel that there are people that you know, if it's not yourself, that could use this message, please, please share it with them. That's the whole reason we're doing this. Uh, there are people out there that are in pain and that need guidance and insight and stories like this to listen to, to realize that they are not alone. And um, there are ways through these things. So please share. You can always, uh, if you're listening to this podcast, you can you can watch if you want to. We are also on YouTube. So please, if you do, subscribe to the channel so you can get... Um, our podcasts that come up every week, we're always live on Tuesday. And there's more information on my website, TammyTuesday.com, where you can also schedule and book um, healings. I do heart energy healing sessions. So if you're interested in that, you can go check that out on my website. And I've done that with several people. Karen was one of them. It's I recommend them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, also you can follow us on social media at Tammy Tuesday life. We appreciate if you follow us there and sending you all with lots of love and light as always. And remember life, love, and purpose. It all begins with you. Peace out. Uh -huh.